front butterfly garden is coming along great. It's uh, Memorial Day weekend 2019. Uh, had a lot of rain this spring, it was a little cooler, but it seemed to have a uh, great effect on the butterfly garden. We had an evergreen tree here that kind of blocked out all this, so we removed that during warm weather in March. And that also seemed to open up the garden as well. More sun and air circulation. And the plants just took, we didn't plant anything, it just took right over. So let me share with you what we have here. We have butterfly weed. This is a native milkweed, bright orange flowers, bloom will be blooming soon. This is Leatris, blazing stars. Some blue flag iris. This plant here I saved from work. One of the buyers threw it away because they, it was a sample, they threw it in the garbage. So that's a salvia. And we just planted some tithonia. But most of this is semi-native or native plants. This is garden phlox. This is phlomus. You don't see this very much around. Hard to find at nurseries. Actually, you never find it at nurseries. This has pink flowers. As you can see, it's gonna start. It's not native. This is Monarda. Bright red flowers for hummingbirds and bees. These are iris rescued from a um, construction site off of Route 17. And more flocks. These are the daylilies that have taken over in New Jersey. Uh, Baptisa, false indigo. Looks like lupin, about coming into bloom. A great plant. As you can see, there is common milkweed everywhere. It's our main source of collecting monarch eggs. We've got sedum in here. Another underused butterfly plant. Painted ladies love it. Good nectar source. We've got different types of rebecchias in here. And of course, you gotta have coneflower. But see all of these common milkweed? These are actually infringing on some of the areas here. We're gonna pull those out and move them somewhere else. So all these guys, so we wanna keep the milkweed because it gets about six, seven feet tall. And it's super fragrant. So any day now, this is all gonna pop. This is gonna be full of color. And this is the front butterfly garden here. It extends underneath that dogwood, but this is the main one. And then a few years ago, we took down a Japanese maple that all this was shade. Nothing was growing under here. And we planted this. So this goes back about, oh, maybe 40 feet. And this has even more plants. This is loaded with different monardas. These are salvias, geraniums for early spring. Got daylilies in here. As you can see, it extends over under here and up the path. To the back woodland gardens. There's Joe Pie weed in here, different kinds of irises, um, cone flowers, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, but our favorite in here is something that everyone tells me is really hard to grow, and that is purple milkweed. And it thrives in here. And these are purple milkweed coming up, and they're everywhere. So purple milkweed will be dotted all over in here. Uh, so in about a month, this is gonna be nothing but butterflies and flowers. So this is the side butterfly garden. Comes all the way. And that was all, that big old thing here was also a rescue. Those are woodland sunflowers. So I wanted to share that with you. Everything is looking really lush this year, as long as we can keep the deer away. So I hope this inspired you to build a butterfly garden, because it's worth it.